still here, hashtag WFH. Welcome back to the Doug McConey vlog. I've had a ton of questions from viewers about video conference like a pro. It was the vlog that I did on how my video conference setup works, what have I learned as part of this whole work from home process as I am on video conference after video conference. If you haven't seen that, check it out. It's on my YouTube channel. And if you're new to the Doug McConey vlog, make sure you give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. All right, let's dive straight into the questions that I've received on Twitter, LinkedIn, email, whatever. And if you have more questions, keep them coming, put them in the comments below, send them to me, slide into my DMs, whatever. We love to talk about nerdy video conference stuff. All right, let's dive into the questions. The first question that I've gotten a number of times is what does my setup look like when I actually join one of the video conference calls? And to remind everybody, I'm using a separate DSLR camera as my webcam. Now, my standard practice is to use a boom mic, but I also have the other mic. So let's see what that looks and sounds like. So this is what my setup looks like when I do a virtual conference call. Not bad. Remember, from video conferencing 1.0, you want to have the light on. If we turn the light off, it starts to look a little dark. And always remember to shut those blinds. With the light off and the blinds open, not, not quite as good a look, right? So this is what it looks like when I dial into a video conference call. Currently, I'm using a boom mic attached to the DSLR that picks up my voice. Alternatively, I can use my microphone that I use for the Cross Border Tax Talks podcast. When I plug this in, this is what it sounds like. So this is what the proper mic sounds like. Big difference, no? Avoids the echo, very directional. I was using this for a lot of my video conference calls, but frankly, a number of my colleagues were making fun of me with my obnoxiously sized microphone in the frame and uh, it did seem like a little much, right? But it sounds so crispy. The next question, why do sometimes I look blurry or do people look blurry? And we're not talking about the pixelation or bandwidth issues. If you'll notice, some people just look blurry. There's a simple reason for that. People, your camera lens needs to be wiped off. If you're using an iPhone as your primary camera, these things get dirty, people. Wipe, wipe them off. If you're still using your computer camera as the primary camera for your video conferencing, that's okay. Just wipe it off on occasion. Things get a little dirty. Keep those camera lenses clean, people. People wanna see you crispy, not blurry. Keep those camera lenses clean. The next question is background. How important is background to the video conference experience? Well, first thing is, I've certainly noticed there appear to be quite a few librarians out there now that everybody's working from home. And that's a good thing. A nice simple bookcase is a great background. So the most important thing to think about when you're setting up your camera location is really minimizing distractions in the background. Imagine being on a conference call when somebody is just walking through your background. It's distracting and it happens, but if you possibly can, do not have a background where you're gonna see interruptions. That includes dogs, spouses, naked children, whatever the case might be. Keep those distractions to a minimum. So what's the best way to avoid the distractions? My number one recommendation is have your camera facing a corner it is much less likely that somebody is going to sneak into the frame when your camera is facing a corner. Now, make sure that you've got the appropriate lighting in front of you, but as I think about my setup, I'll never have to worry about somebody diving in. I occasionally get some puppies that come in at my feet, but they rarely sneak into the frame of the camera. 
find a good corner, make sure you've got good lighting, and you're really going to be able to minimize the distractions that occur when you're on a video conference. You don't want to be on an important call where your kids are running around in the background. So the most common issue that I still see and a question I've received a number of times relates to why does somebody sound so echoey or why do I sound echoey? And there's a couple of reasons. One, it's the microphone. If you're not, if your mouth is not close to the microphone, then there's a lot higher likelihood that you're going to pick up an echo. So how do you solve that? Either get a proper microphone or use your phone and use a headset and you will avoid the echo. So it doesn't matter which of the video conference tools you use, they all have a feature that allows you to dial your phone. So the actual video conference tool will dial your phone. If you don't have a good microphone setup, use that. And then you can use any headset that's attached to your phone. The other benefit of that is that you generally will not have the bandwidth issues that you sometimes see on these video conference calls because you're using the cell phone towers for your voice and it's only the video then is subject to Wi-Fi and bandwidth limitation issues. So use that feature if you've got an echo or if you've got bandwidth issues. The other common problem with the echo is that if people are in big rooms without a lot of stuff in them, you're just naturally going to get a lot more echo. So. Use those headsets, people. So use the phone and the headset to kill the echo.